everyone, Scott Myers back with another video. Today we're going to be doing uh, injector number 5 on the 6 -0 power stroke. So what happened was uh, I was driving, basically a little bit low on power, white smoke coming out of the tailpipe. I believe the injector stuck halfway open, it's not a lot of white smoke. Um, it's just a little bit under acceleration, I mean more than normal, a lot more. Uh, if you watch some videos, if you have the injector stuck all the way open, there's a lot of white smoke. So this one's not really like that. I got a cylinder five contribution code. Truck's got like 165 on it. So I've already replaced uh, injector number, I believe it was number six on the driver's side. So now this is the passenger side. It's gonna be uh, cylinder number five. So I'm gonna show you guys basically how to do it, what tools to use, things like that. So basically you have your even cylinders on your driver's side and your uneven odd numbers are gonna be on your passenger side. All right guys, first step that I like to do is remove this 10 millimeter, I already loosened it. So just take this off. Basically that goes to your alternator and your FICOM, or not FICOM, it goes to your glow plug module. So I like to get that out of the way. So when I take the glow plug module, it just, everything flips out of the way. There's nothing else in there. Always remember to take both negatives off, this negative and that negative off. I already took the charge pipe off, which is right here for the uh, hot side of the turbo. So basically I always take them off from the clamps here. So this one goes to the turbo. This one goes to the intercooler. My clamps are 13 millimeter. Yours might be 12 millimeter, mine are 13. All right, so what I like to do first is remove the ICP pigtail right here. Now when you guys remove this, make sure you have this, oops, make sure you guys have this plastic cone and it didn't get lost inside the sensor itself. So you take that one off first and then you'll take the two connectors off of the uh, FICO module. So to get those off, all there is is just a little tab right here right the tab is right under here so you just lift up the tab and just pull it out just like that do the same for this one then after there's three 10 millimeter bolts so you got 10 millimeter here 10 millimeter here so you pull this wire harness off right here just like that and then you have another 10 millimeter right there so also what I like to do is this glow plug harness right here goes down the bottom of the valve cover. I like to get that out of the way. I'll take this off here, push this pin in, and then you put, pull this down and it pulls right out. And you can take it and just move it out of the way. I'll just move it down here out of the way. Then this whole harness here, like I said, it unplugs here. So I can take it right here like this. If it gets unstuck. So I can take it and basically see how it's all off and slide it up off over here. Also, what I wanted to note is to get back here, the valve cover bolts is your best friend. Get a shorty, 12 millimeter ratchet. All right, once you get, it should look like this. Once you get the harness out of the way, so I just want to note too, this right here, unplug this. Remember it goes in the front. It does not go like this, where some people say, if you put it here, your AC won't work. So I usually just put this out of the way over here. Be careful with it, cause it could break. All right, so you guys want to make sure you have the updated dummy plug and stand pipes, at least in a uh, 2004 and a half up. You also have this oil rail in 2004 and a half and up, which has both dummy plug and stand pipe. So you got your dummy plug here, 12 millimeter hex. 12 millimeter hex means that you have the updated one. If it's a 10 millimeter hex, you don't have the updated one. So the updated ones have the white clips on them. Now also, you're gonna want to well, what happens is the standpipe back here, if you pull it up and like this one separated, so it's in two pieces, then that's fine. You can take it out like that and then take the other piece out later. Now, if it comes out in one piece and you can't separate it, what you have to do is you have to take the oil rail out and 
the uh, standpipe out at the same time. There's not enough clearance to take it all out. You're gonna hit this air box right here. So just letting you guys know about that. All right, so your oil rail is a T30. These right here. Okay, I usually use a quarter inch drive. I got a quarter inch drive ratchet swivel, comes in handy. Also, I bought this at O'Reilly's. You guys can get this. It basically just snaps in. So it's a it's a 3/8 drive T30, then 3/8 drive, and then you get quarter drive. But also you have this, so you can rotate with your fingers, which makes it a lot easier. And when I get to the hard ones down here by the airbox. I will uh, show you how I get those ones off. So the special tool I made you guys to take the uh, the, the two bolts that are closest to the uh, heat shield on the uh, on the heater box is this right here. So basically, I took one of these. I took a T30. I cut it in half, right where those lines are, and then what I did is I welded a washer on it first, and then a 12 millimeter nut okay now if you guys make this tool you got to watch out for the length because the length has um it'll hit the heater box also so basically this right here is what it looks like don't make fun of the welds but it's all about the functionality right so basically right here you can put it here you get your eight millimeter goes down right here like this and you can break it free on any of the tight ones and it's on a ratcheting wrench okay now on the last one you can use the 12 millimeter because of the nut on a ratcheting wrench and it just makes everything so much easier plus the reason why i use a 12 millimeter wrench is so you can also spin it by hand and it makes it so much easier so basically if you just loosen the bolt stick this in there and you can just back the threads off with your hand I uh, hope this guy hope this helps for you guys. It it helps for me. I use it all the time every time I do this job. All right, I'm doing cylinder five injector. Cylinder five is this one right here. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do to get the clip off and all that stuff. Well, I'll get the connector off. So basically, there's two ways you can do it. You can push this tab in right here, which expands it and then lifts it up, or you can take the clip all the way off and just lift it out like that. A lot of people don't like doing it this way, but what I do is I grab this here and I pull, it's hard to see. I just pull it right out. Be careful not to lose it. That's why a lot of people don't like doing it that way because they have like issues of losing it or have lost it. But as long as you're careful, it's fine. I uh, do it that way, just my preference. So now once that's off, this literally just lifts right out like that. Put that off to the side. So to get the injector out of the rocker box, I use a shorty 19 with a swivel socket or a swivel extension. You can use any size extension and I always use 12 point. It works better. So you just basically put it here and rock it like this, get it on, rock it like that and it pops right out. I just gotta do it off camera, but that's how you take that out. All right, next step is a T40 to get the injector out. So you got the injector hold down, which is a T40 bolt or T40 Torx. So usually you have like a, a long T40. I just have this in my toolbox and I just ground it down and it works, it works perfect. I do half inch, I have a nice half inch torque wrench so when I go to set the set it back that's what I use once you get the injector out on your injector hold down make sure you clean the threads thoroughly and then blow out the hole that this goes in you don't want a false torque that's uh that'll cause like an injector to come loose come out the bolt to untorque itself loosen itself so always make sure you blow out the oil in the hole so also you don't get a false torque. All right, so the new injector comes with the O-rings already lubricated. 
comes with a rubber on the tip and make sure always make sure that the copper washer is on there i've seen one with the copper washer not on it already so I'll, what i do is i'll just put a little bit of more lube on the o-rings before i put them in and obviously make sure you take that off all right new injectors in i just wanted to note don't cheap out on the injectors okay don't get like a hundred dollar fuel injector from like advanced auto or nap or whatever you want to make sure you get like uh i always go ford oem i mean you can get it like 30 dollars cheaper if you go online but with ford oem you get a two-year warranty and they always have them in stock so if another injector goes you can pick up the injector same day put it in and return the core so that's the reason why i use the uh oem ford on a stock truck um also i wanted to go over the torque I always do 28 foot pounds. So a lot of people do 26, 25, whatever. I always do 28. That's just my preference and I'm just gonna keep doing it that way. Okay, lastly, just to sum things up, always make sure you put your injector harness through the rocker box and make sure you connect it back through here before you put the valve cover on. Now, if you go and put the oil rail on and do all this other stuff and put the valve cover gasket on and the valve cover on, you go to push this connector down, it might be pushed through the rocker box. And if it does, then you got to take the valve cover back off again and push that up through. So make sure this is done before you put the uh, valve cover in, or oil rail and valve cover on. All right. Now, before you put your oil rail on, don't forget to blow out all eight so you don't torque i just want to note before you put your valve cover back on don't forget to put your dummy plug in and your standpipe dummy plug standpipe make sure you lubricate the o-rings and put them in all right so this is what i was talking about priming the oil system do it for like 30 second intervals let it rest you don't want to hurt the starter there you go guys fire up after that okay after you do that next step is to start the truck so we'll come over here should start right up and she does so now just let it run till it's warmed up and then uh, go take it for a drive while you're driving it go like half pedal three quarters of a pedal um, you could do a couple pulls just to get the uh, bubbles and air worked out of the oil system and then after that you'll be all set all right guys hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe